Oh, I've never played this game before. I've only GM this game. So if you if you know if you need a substitute, you know I don't mind. Oh yeah. I, I've got I've got time right now. Just tell that you've not played. Hmm. Sorry, what was that? I didn't hear you there. I feel bad that you've not played now. Oh, you feel bad? No, <laughs> I, I, I like I like doing this. I just, hey, that's typically just the have, life have of a GM. Time of play. Yeah, it is the life of GM. Like, because I got a friend who I enjoys actually, this, but he hasn't had the I time to I actually found a couple of people now in my group who said, hey, we've got, we've got some ideas too. We'd like to GM a couple of times nice. too. Nice. See, I don't have and, that. I, I don't and, have people who do really, that. I'm really, really glad about that. <laughs> yeah, that's I like well. GMing, yes. But um, I also like playing. I like playing a lot. Yeah, I'm the. I'm usually the perpetual GM. So. It's not a competition. It's enjoying getting to play this game. Yeah, this this yeah, we had, this Wednesday I've got when, wandering GM coming to play, and when we talked about it, he was really excited about it, saying he never gets to play, and he's so excited to finally play instead of GM. <laughs> Bless him. Bless hey, him. Hey, <laughs> everyone can see you guys now. You're fully live, just so you know. So Teddy B, take it over. All right. Uh, okay. What's up, guys? It's Big Teddy B in the house, session three. Subscribe to Cyberpunk and Sensor. Share, like the vid, activate notifications. We got a new motherfucking player. How we doing, crew? There he is right there. I don't know where I'm pointing. I've oh, got the one screen. I can't actually see you guys, but I've got the the uh, the screen here, roll 20, full screen. So I just wanted to... Uh, just clarify this session is just more role play because we got the new player here and I just wanted to just want to make it a little casual today you know just more office role play and stuff but yeah test the waters uh, so I got a mission I want us to do uh, after we we finish this and hopefully because Drake Mir isn't here by the way he uh, I don't know what's happening when but you know hopefully we'll get him next time but uh yeah we'll, we'll, we'll think about the mission next time i know you guys want some action but got a background it's... noise still don't rule out me just you know going off and shooting a couple of people in the office i mean yeah i will not rule that out you you test me as a gym you do what you want to do that this is your game i'm just gm i'm just gming your game uh, <laughs> we got a bit. Uh, is that is that your thing? Uh, yeah. The background noise, renegade. Uh, oh wait, so, someone got rule twenty. Uh, their thing on their uh, mic on and rule twenty. Yeah, someone may not have done that. Because I'm here. I'm hearing uh, feedback. I'm hearing, I'm hearing, uh, I'm hearing myself right now. Is that, is that Renegade? Yeah, but it's not Roll20. I just have to change is, something is he... in my settings. Oh, okay. Is that Renegade? So is that better now? Yeah, but it's not Roll20. Uh, uh, you can still hear it at the minute. That, that, I think that was the previous. Okay. So is that better now? Nah, we're hearing you again. I'm hearing it again. I think that was the previous. You know, just a second. All right. Now we're hearing you again. Could could you mute it for now, if that's cool, okay, so I can just. Uh... No. Right. Uh, the joys of technology. Because <laughs> I don't want to speak and then I hear myself and I can't concentrate when that stuff. Uh, all right. Well, why why are he's fixing that? I know we 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 touched on it, but I just want to say everyone enjoying twenty seventy seven. Like, has anyone got particular th thoughts about the game? Because I know that came out, and you know, I got stuff I want to say. But you know, any, anyone? Uh, what? what did, what's one thing you like about the game the most? Let's see. Uh, let, let's start with uh, Panda. What? What, what do you like about the game? I, what, what's something that stands out to you that maybe surprises you even? Yeah, I'm not in a position to play yet. Oh, my no, bad. I thought you'd played the game. I, I, that's a shame. No, I I wanted to, but um, between needing to do some upgrading on my PC anyway, but uh, I, I started a new job a week ago, so I've been oh, you've had no time. Busy and, and I, d yeah. I didn't want to. 
end up staying up till 4am and being tired at a new job. I didn't think that was the best idea. <laughs> like, I don't always make the smart choices in life, but uh, that's that's one I avoided. Yeah, well, I, ho I really hope you get to play it, because in my opinion, I really like the game. But I'll, yeah, I'll well, go... Uh, yeah? Yeah, I I figured with... If I was going to give myself a bit of a break anyway, then I'd, I'd probably leave it, like, six weeks or something. Uh, wait until a few patches drop anyway, because... That's Almost smart. That's every smart. game is buggy when it first comes out. That's how it happens. Well, yeah, you speak of patches, but and I know there's a explaining that to January. Some people. Yeah, there's a January, February. They're gonna do optimization. I, I believe January there'll be an optimization. So you're probably it's probably your best bet is waiting. I don't know how powerful your PC is, but uh, what do we uh, Griff? Anything you want to say about twenty seventy seven? I mean, <laughs> it's a bit like when you've been a fan of a book for ages and then the movie comes out and you're like, well, you know, it's, it's good. It's, it's not as good as the book. but um, So obviously the medium's going to limit you in what you can and can't do in a video game versus a, a pen and paper role-playing game. But i got to say I'm loving the, the writing. Uh, the, the side quests feel just as fleshed out and realized as as the main story quest does uh it's not like skyrim where it's like go to x and steal y and come back to z over and over again um there's a you can tell the work that's gone into it and in regards to the bugs yeah i have seen some bugs i'm playing on uh xbox series x um i've had like two crashes i've seen a few bugs um, and my other half is playing on regular PS4. He's not really seen anything major either. So, I mean, like, like Panda says that um, no game is going to be completely bug-free when it comes out and probably will never be completely bug-free. Games are always having having patches, but as, as games go, it, it's not been bad. I mean, it's a few years back now, but... I remember Arkham Origins was a lot more bug ridden than than Cyberpunk has been for me so far. So yeah, but I I know the the writing. You mentioned the writing. You're definitely right on the well, especially with the side quest. Uh, I don't want to spoil anything because if anyone's watching, maybe the but I've had. Let's just say there's a lot of. Uh, Morally, like I question myself when I do something, and Johnny Sylvan might pressure me into doing something I didn't think I would do, and that that's just an example. Like the the game, the writing, everything, like even the comics that they released before, it's just so good. I knew that that was something that I think is one of the, my favorite things. But yeah, but there's, I, what, there's one side quest where I won't spoil anything, but I was talking to a couple of friends the other night, and they were like. Oh, did you did you watch the thing? And I was like, no, I couldn't. I couldn't do that. I said, no, I'm out. by um, Oh, really? I watched. Yeah, it was really brutal. And I mean, there's a lot of quests there. Where you're like, oh, this is really depressing. <laughs> yeah, I, I will. I will. I won't spoil it. But you might know one quest where it's about about a prisoner. I'll just say that one side quest about a prisoner. That is so fucking good. That that one was. Genuinely, I was like, "Wow, I can not believe the way that connect." You know, I won't, I won't touch on it too much, but that one's one of my favorite ones. I still got so many to do as well. But that was the one where I was like, "No, I'm out. Bye bye." <laughs> but yeah, just one more thing because the game came out. And I just want to talk about the game. Uh, one, one more thing is, what's everyone? Do you have a favorite character? Because I'll, t I'll tell you mine right now. My, my uh, well, I've got. I think the female cast in this game is is the strongest. In my opinion, uh, I want to say Evelyn Parker, one of my favorites. Pan and Palmer, Rogue, Claire, uh, but Evelyn Parker in particular. If you've seen Cyber, uh, sorry, Blade Runner twenty forty nine. I was she's, actually going to say Evelyn. Parker yeah, she well. she look she reminds me of Joy from from uh, Blade Runner. Uh, yeah, Blade Runner, and that's one of my favorite movies. But. She, I mentioned she she not only looks the part, but she acts the part. The way she is, like she's the most cyberpunk character in the game, in my opinion. But yeah, she's for me yeah. one for sure one of my favorite characters, and she, even yeah. Judy as well is pretty good as well. I she like buys her. into a lot of the tropes. I think where that outwardly she's 
quite a sexualized character, but she's got a lot of hidden depths going on, and there's a lot exactly. more to her. And yeah, I, I would say she's underrated. A lot of people are they've got their maybe favorite character. I know people love Judy, but everyone loved Judy before. Everybody did before. Uh, everyone loved Judy before. Oh yeah, Renegade. I forgot to ask you what, what was your uh, what uh, on the first point. What was your um, what What did you take like, away like from Cyberpunk? Lot. I like a lot how you can get into the lore too. Like every time you get chip, you can get you can get into the lore. Nearly every time you've you've got those chips that don't have anything to do with the lore. But I I love how they put all those things together. How they really made it fit. That's what I really liked. Yeah, actually, uh, you say that. Have you been to the Corporal Plaza? Have you have you seen times, the yeah. yeah well the Arasaka building, like yeah, why yeah. uh, the memorial, yeah. that was fucking cool, that was cool because well, well, one and you, a half hours ago I was there. <laughs> oh really? Well, actually, did you do a corporal? Did you do corporal life path? Because I know you. I'm, uh, doing, I'm doing the corporal right now. All right, because I, I I also am doing my other playthrough, and I I have my uh I you fly out the building in your A four or A V four, yeah. uh to, towards uh, I think it was Lizzie's bar, and you fly out the building. I just thought it was so cool, but the fact what I find interesting about that building, the, the new one, because that was built in twenty seventy, I think it was, uh, is just knowing that there's a history behind it, knowing that in red, that 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 was. That you know, there was a building there. It was a twin building complex, yeah. and uh, there, there's very similar. It, it reminds me of 9/11 because you had the twin yeah. complex, and you had you got a memorial beside it. You know, uh, just commemorating. You know, everyone in 2023 with the building. It just it reminds me of it. You know, the terrorist attack and all. It it really there's a, like a dark history behind it. That, that that was something when i that's one of my favorite locations in the game just because of that history with this building there's so many connotations of that but anyway that's also, i just also yep. when you um when you actually get into into the role and you and you play johnny silverhand oh yeah playing johnny silverhand I, yeah I yeah love, i love that I, I really really love that yeah and I mean, the Malorian was it was one of my favorite weapons before. The, the web, yeah, uh, the gun with the flame, is, is flame attachment. Ah, oh, dude, that I, I don't want to see. I want to talk about Johnny Silva and what he does, but uh, again, spoilers. I, I mean, is there even a? Could we? No, we can't discuss spoilers. But I know the game's been out for a little bit. But yeah, I know what you mean. Johnny Silverhand is. I, I'd say he's as good as he needed to be I, I didn't think i would agree with him on stuff as as much as i did because my i'm k i'm sort of a i'm a nomad like i'm not gonna trust him really but i ended up trusting him in things i wouldn't trust them on really like just just based on how i thought my playthrough would go but, actually he had a real hard time with me because because you're a corporal the game, I was a huge <laughs> fan but yeah <laughs> then the way he treated us when he f first awoke, after the after this prelude, when he when he first came uh, came there, um, I was like, "Bo, oh, no, that fuck! I don't want to have anything <laughs> to do with him." So every time he wanted me to do something, I did the opposite thing. Yeah, well, I'm gonna do that in my corporal playthrough for sure. Because there's a character called Te I think Takamura. The Takamura, I, I, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna discuss who he is, but like. That character is so cool. And I, I actually had a really interesting conversation with him as a nomad because he's he's a corporal character, but I had I, I, dude, I was I was a purebred nomad. Like I, I uh, that that's what I was role playing as, and at least as best as you can with the because you can select the dialogue choices. And I remember telling him something like, "Oh, you could be a nomad," and he's like, "Well, you can't teach an old dog new tricks." And that you know that it's 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 a line that we've heard of, but when he said that, it just sort of resonated a little bit. You know, he's he's been in it for too long. He's yeah. been in the game too long. You know, so yeah. And anyway, well, him always, yeah. always complaining that he don't have decent food. Uh, food over. Oh there. yeah, yeah, oh yeah, yeah. His lines are what, my favorite lines. I think he's he's so funny. Sushi in Haywood. That sounds dangerous. <laughs> I was actually gonna say last thing because you didn't get a chance. But who's your favorite character? Do you have one? In 2077. It's difficult. Um, 
I really, I really. I got like, a couple. I really like uh, the, uh, those you just said, like uh, Panem, the Jimmy, female characters, um, Evelyn, um, whom I whom I like as a character is also Takamura very much. Oh yeah, he's good. And and River, I think River that. It, I I haven't met him yet. I have not met him yet. Uh, he's on. He's okay. in a side quest, but um, uh, yeah, I heard he's good I though. Think, my, I think my... rather a rather cool character, and he shows this. And a bit the flair of those hard-boiled detectives, you know, of those um... that neo noir, <laughs> neo noir type type stuff. Mm. I, w I would say as well about the romances as well that playing a character that's gay, you know, I've had a, a character that's uh, a female character that's clearly interested in me, and that was like awkward in a good way and like i've been interested in a male character who's not interested in me and that was awkward in a good uh, way and i think it's just a, the strength of the writing really, really i will say up, i will know? i will say this i didn't i didn't play a gay character but the gay romance i'm not gonna say who it is the gay romance surprised me let's just say it surprised me i did i was like you can romance this guy i couldn't believe <laughs> it but but when i when i saw that i was like oh oh man like you know, fans are gonna love it, but I'm not gonna say who it is. But like, mm. I was so surprised that you could run him. But anyway, just want to talk about just kill some time because I know Drake Mir is not here, and it, this is gonna shorten our play time a little bit. But I just want to give a recap. So this is a, a sort of long recap, uh, somewhat long anyway. So it's been a while. Uh, our new we got a new player, of course. So we want to keep keep him up to speed. Uh, and I know it's been a while since we last played, uh, like a week and a half or two weeks or some, because the video game came out. But in the first session, uh, there was a downsizing event, and people were being transferred and filed, fired all over. And this happened in the Glen. Uh, there was the Rockland campus in the Glen. It's a, it's a small, uh, 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 sorry, not campus, uh, uh, building. Just, just a, it's a branch. It's a small branch. It's not uh, where you are right now, much bigger. Uh, it's a, a le legit campus that you're in uh, with a hospital and it's got sky bridges. Uh, but David Scale, Bob from IT, and Jared were transferred to Rockland Campus in New Westbrook. Jared was recruited by David to lead in sales. Jared is a synth coke addict, uh, American guy, yuppie type character. He's, uh, yeah. Yeah, I think you'll see more of him if you haven't before, of course, if you're new. The the trade-off was that David would need to fire Mike Marshall, whom was upset by the decision, as we've seen. Uh, Balthazar was recruited that day by Rockland as a contractor, mainly to manage public relations for the Neo Corps. Uh, later that day, Mike managed to track down David Skell's crew. He got out of his car... This is the guy who was fired. I nervously drew out his pistol towards David. David swiftly used a pressure point strike and killed Mike in one hit. The body was then dumped back into his car. And that, that was the first one. Last session, the second one, David had a visit from a media from the Glen known as Lorenzo Costa. He said he worked for Deborah Marshall, Mike's wife and was investigating the disappearance. The crew moved into Rockland campus on New Westbrook uh, that same day, and they were introduced to the flamboyant marketing director, Teddy Burns. And However, there was a suspicious individual in Bob's office. Now, I can't ask Bob about this. He's not here. But what Bob said last time was that he as he told security about it, and this is something that it it could uh, this this is something that would have came up for Bob, but I we're, we'll show that next time that we'll, we'll show the sort of aftermath of that. Uh, David Scale was introduced to his team, which right now consists of his driver Jared, Bob, Balthazar, and Zara. Uh, Balthazar started to question two ladies in the office to find out if there were any suspicious behavior in the office regarding the death of Mike Marshall. Uh, he found out there were there was someone snooping around in the area. 
and a week has just passed since the first session so a week in total everyone makes back their lifestyle cost since arriving in the campus so if everyone is on the good prepack style that is 600 eddies uh no one's paying rent because you're living in corporate conaps three weeks until the next month starts so a week in total has passed uh i'm giving so if if you do know what your lifestyle was i think everyone should be on good prepack which is 600 eddies and you pay that every month so you go ahead add your 600 back and i know people made money from hustles last time so just make sure you add all that and uh and th this is sort of the signing on deal that you get you get this money back so we have let's transition here so we have the intro of Bran Ramirez so the we'll describe I'll describe the campus a little bit I'm gonna turn this down if I can it's a little loud for me. Okay. So, everyone is in the campus, Rockland Augmentics campus. Uh, it's comprised of offices, meeting spaces, a cafeteria, and a hospital connected via several sky bridges to a second, much larger concrete building, home solely to research and development. This is where the players reside. Meanwhile, at the Rockland Campus Hospital in New Westbrook. Ramirez is clocking in, ready to work. Uh, describe your character, Griffalo. Uh, Bran is uh, Latin American. Uh, he is quite neat and tidy. He's quite unassuming. Um, stays much, much to himself, uh, quite quiet, but he's known as uh, pretty professional around the campus. Uh, he's a excellent, skilled med tech. Um, he's not much of a fighter, so uh, he might be looked down on somewhat by other members of uh, more military style uh, squads. Uh, he enjoys the medicine a lot more than the the action. Let's just say that. All right, so he's not into uh, combat. You would I say. I think he, it makes him nervous. He, he accepts okay. that that is part of uh, he's trauma part team. of the job, a part yeah. of as, as trauma team. Um, but he likes. He likes the opportunity that Trauma Team affords him to really get into some interesting medicine. Uh, he just doesn't like being shot at. Okay, uh, that's fair enough. I was going to say uh, to roll your hustle. Okay. And this will determine what you've been doing. So you just roll a d6. I have the hustles here. You don't have to look them up. I'll, I'll just say what happened. Uh, but if you do want to know, I th actually, I do have the hustles on the top right of the screen. And uh, if you want to... Okay, you got a six. And your ability should be four. Uh, when we start off, it always should be four. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, you got a six. So you designed and delivered medicines or street drugs to a client. So you're, you're in a hospital. I presume mm -hmm. you're, you, you delivered medicines inside the hospital, I will say. And that, that gives gives you 100 eddies, and that's for the week. Uh, but we'll say you've just completed that, and that, that's going to give you 100 eddies. And that's what you've been doing kind of the whole time right now. Uh, so go ahead and add that. Tell me when you are done. Yeah. Uh, okay, so you recognize your superior, Antonio, calling you on your agents. What do you do? You answer, you... Oh, yep, yeah. straight away. Hello? Hey, Ramirez, got this job offer for you. For whatever reason, Rocklin keeps dishing out these contracts faster than my ex-wife when she spent all my life savings. Sum me up, you cabber on looking for a med tech just across the sky bridge. You interested? Uh, 
any I mean yeah any more any more details on that or just uh, get over to my office we'll discuss I'm on my way right now all right so you're getting on your way but we'll transition to the corporate conapt of David Skell David was sent an assignment from Teddy Burns to investigate the Merrill Asukaga and Finch gold incident. He recommended David assign a new team member for his crew. Teddy advised looking into the new, somewhat secretive medtech program for assets to his crew. So okay. it's, you're doing a library search, David, and you might want to sort of zone in on, on the correct, you know, contracts that will matter to you most. So I would say rule a, rule a uh, library search skill if you have a library skill, uh, a search skill. If you don't, I, I would need to check what that would be. I don't know if that's int, but uh, okay, you do have one. Uh, 12, you, you, you get a couple, but you're not satisfied. You could, you well, could then I'll, wait. Then I'll let you can... uh, then you can... I'll, I'll, if I'm not satisfied, I'll call my, uh, my assistant. Sure. And let her, let her check out what people are available and which ones would fit. Okay, she she can she too can do a library search. Uh, I'll have to roll for her. She will probably have a good uh, good skill number for this. I actually don't know. <laughs> Just a second. I, yeah, I, I sh probably should send you uh, her details, but for now, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll roll here. for her. I think you got them from me. Can you, can you see her? Uh, oh, yeah, you can. Can you see her character sheet? Uh, I don't know if I, sh if I should let you see it. That's the thing. I never really d decided. Um, actually, actually um, I had given you the... Um, no, I can't see her character sheet. But actually, huh. I sent you the um, the details. Yeah, you did. They, they were by rolling out. Well, I'll, I'll so go ahead. Those uh... details, I've got the details here. I just don't have the um, the correct sheet. That's okay. I I, I do have. Uh, I use something from the uh, the book uh, where you have to roll. So I I had a thing for. Her. I don't I don't think she has a library search skill. I don't see one no, here, but. Don't. Yeah, I, I'll, I'll go and I'll go roll a d10. What do you remember? What the skill is? I, I, is it in? Is it intelligence? It is intelligence. Right. Intelligence. Uh, I'd also volunteer that if you want, you do have a team with skills that you know we've sort of been through who we are, what we do. Uh, so you know you have a decently skilled researcher in your team's media. Yeah. Right. So if you wanted to make oh, use of him, then you could. That's true, actually. Yeah, I, I didn't think. But, well, I was going to say she got a uh, 14. So she okay. she she does pull out some stuff. She she, she uh, okay. She's going to send, send over some stuff to you uh, based on her search. Uh, okay. And she's, she's happy about this. So just to give you an idea of the, of the role. Yeah. But she finds... Well, so well done. Yeah, and, yeah she... Uh... Sorry, and well, I'm looking forward to uh, to seeing what she uh, what she found. Okay, out. oh yeah, she she's send she's sending you over some names right now. Uh, okay. She 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 found a, a James Fisher, a Ripper Duck, a Braniff okay. Ramirez, a junior level combat medic, and an okay. Isla Benedict, a medicine specialist. Those those are the names okay. that come up, and this is for you to sort of. Think about. Yeah. And that I will. Okay. Well, yeah. You you can uh, just sort of sift through those. Uh, David knows that he will need to contact Teddy to assign a contract over to one of these new team mem potential team members. However, David is allowed to make his own changes if he wishes on the contract. I don't know if you'll have ideas on that now. That's okay. We'll just uh, if you have ideas in the future, you just let me know. Uh, but yeah, we we, we transition. Um, we transition. I'll actually call Baltazar. But I'll Sorry? actually call Baltazar. 
Oh, you call Balthazar? Okay, go ahead. I'll call Balthazar because um, last time we we had that issue with this with this um, with this guy who was investigating, who was in my place, Lorenzo Lorenzo Costa. 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 Yep. And um, I know he told he told us that um, he was supposed to look into this too, to see whether this could damage our reputation. And I actually got an idea how we can get him out of the equation, making him the, uh, the scapegoat. Really? Well, you go ahead. Go ahead and call Balthazar. I'll, I'll call him and I'll ask him to come to my place. Because okay. I'll, not, I'll not talk about that over the agent. Oh, so, so, uh, yeah. oh, so you call him with the agent, but just to say, hey, we're going to have a conversation like IRL. Um, I'll ask him to come to my place. Okay. Yeah, Balthazar happily heads round. And you, you're in your conapt, your uh, corporate conapt, uh, David David's uh, conapt. Okay. Um, so, what I thought, I told me that um, there, uh, there were rumors that what was what was the name again? The, the guy I fired, well, that he uh, he was uh, Mike. Mike. It was Mike uh, Marshall. He was gambling, and he he had uh, he was in debt, and so on. And actually, his wife it seems not to believe this, so he was investigating. I thought if we can if we can frame that on him, they uh, they made it look like a, like a suicide. So we can frame it on him, like um, making, for example, uh, sample Bob set uh, set some files in his agent or in his <clears throat> in his working space that um, have uh, a story telling about that guy being addicted or a story about. People working working for for Roglin and other corps, being a, being addicted to gambling and telling his name, making it look like he he had put pressure on him, so there there was too much for him, and that he that, that was the reason he committed suicide. We just have to find a way to make that public then. Okay, so uh, what I'm getting from this uh, boss dude is uh, you want me to knock up a totally legit uh, suicide note from this clearly yeah. unhinged individual. I I can do that. So let's be clear. You you want to you want to forge a suicide note? Is that your plan, Balthazar? Yeah, I can I can put together a uh, well Balthazar wouldn't actually be putting it it'll be down to Bob I presume to sort of fake oh, the Bible okay. but okay. but Balthazar can provide the you know provide a compelling narrative he he's a writer he can do this uh, I'm sure I have something that's an appropriate role for this uh, oh there we go I, I knew there was something composition. Composition yeah. rule. That that's is that imp. No, uh, it's intellect based. Huh. Yeah, that makes sense. I suppose. I've never seen a composition rule before. This would be the first one. But yeah, composition what? rule for this. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. I don't think it's going to be very high. I think. Oh, I mean, you, yeah, you, you succeed. You succeed in compositing. He's a media. Writing compelling stories is what he does. Of course. So yeah, you you uh, can, can you clarify what exactly you did, just just so we know. Uh, so for the context, Bal Balthazar basically takes the idea that um, David had about putting this um, document, whether it whether it's a direct "I'm going to kill myself" note or whether it's just a series of sort of 
journal entries that are getting progressively more and more unhinged <laughs> and talking about oh maybe if i you know i've I, i've got a gun maybe i can like knock over this backstreet casino or something to pay off my debts maybe i can and and coming up with wild theories of how he's going to pay this ever mounting debt and then just the the last couple of them just trail off into man i i don't know how i can do this i can't uh i can't what was her name uh i can't like face admitting this to deborah and they're gonna fire me from the company because I'm a liability, and they're gonna take my house, and she's gonna leave me, and I I just can't live with it, man. Well, yeah. And, so you, like a basically like a, a diary, like or a, fi- yeah. a fake diary, yeah. Yeah. That, yeah. So that, I'll, that's I'll a type good up all role the for text for, for like Bob to then place into his agent or whatever. Sure. Yeah, it's, I, I, I'm gonna just take over Bob's character and, and say that I think Bob would would do that. I think Bob is going to because you, you guys were together at the time. You know, I, I, I'm gonna just safely say that yeah, Bob is gonna comply with this, and uh, how how he succeeds in sort of doing that that that's up to him. But you know, he just needs to sort of uh, go along with your little plan. So I'll, I'll uh, have that ready for. For Bob, when he when he gets here next week, hopefully I'll just. And just to clarify, since they seem to be sort of rolled into one now, um, I think that's going to be a. Are you okay with that then counting as another um, substantial piece of evidence for this story that he's going to do? Um, for, for this, for this, for, for this diary. For this diary. Yeah, I'm going to make the going to make the diary. One right. of the pieces of evidence in this story that uh, Balthazar's been putting together to discredit Lorenzo Costa and his yeah. totally bogus investigation, which is clearly designed to throw shade at a an upstanding and fine corporation and its employees. Yeah, but because you know the stakes, you know that in this time period, uh, with the face of the company. Uh, oh crap! How did I forget her name? Uh, Hidalgo, uh, Hidalgo. Yacinda, yeah. Yacinda Hidalgo. Well, you know that at this point, you know that PR is so important and you, you understand that, you know, Teddy, he was very protective of, uh, well, really just if anything goes wrong, it's it's really Hidalgo, the, the, Hidalgo, the face of Rockland. Everything is just on her and, you know, this, this is she, essentially her being... The, lit, the literal face of this company. This It's a big deal that PR, you know, it needs to be, uh, you know, media's attacking, you know, from left and right. Uh, that, yeah, that you do some damage control or whatever and suppress these media type characters. And so, yeah, you, you can definitely use this uh, in your tactic to uh, suppress this media. Uh, this is what Balthazar's here for, man. Uh, exactly. So, fight for y- truth and justice. So yeah, you guys had a little thing going on there, which is which is pretty good, and I accept that that would be a piece of evidence. Uh, and and but, perhaps, and perhaps, if you get some notes together, like if you were researching for this, you might be able to get it uploaded in um, Lorenzo's workspace or agent or whatever. Yeah, the, the, uh, there ship? is. Uh, you you can upload on the the data pool. So like in, uh, you upload it to. What's the name of the? Uh, it's it's like local city nets, oh, like local. The garden. The, the garden. The, yeah, the gar- the garden. But like I'm so I'm saying, if you upload it to like a terminal, uh, it it's not in the Glen, but it, it's still, it, it's still it's not like Wi-Fi. It's more like large local area networks are sort of connected so it kind of like bounces through and yeah it will be on the garden you can upload that and he can see it from the his glen office so yeah you can you can go ahead and just upload that and this is this might be something that he you know he could just go log in and he'll see it and this this might there might be stuff happening maybe maybe reacts a certain way by this um lorenzo doesn't need to know about these uh, these files being on his agent this is to discredit discredit him so oh, well, he, he, he wants to 
he wants and to do an article. Who made it? Who did that? And he goes like, "Okay, you can check." Okay. You well, I, I, I was saying that Balthazar Balthazar is is writing an article. Or, yeah, or okay. is it, yeah, the, yeah, yeah. This is this is going to be part of the evidence, so it's not. Right. We don't need um, Lorenzo to know about it now. We're just oh, going to okay. claim he knew. Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. That, that, that's fine. That, I understand what you're trying to do, but uh, yeah. Uh, but yeah, if you're going to upload anything, just yeah, the garden is is Balthazar is. I would presume this is what he would like to submit his material uh, just for the future future reference. So that that's that. So we'll we'll say we we transition back um, to the hospital again. Something you want to add? I was just going to say while we're while we're on this subject, um, something that Balthazar hasn't done yet. Uh, just a couple of rolls. Uh, he wanted to look into uh, Lorenzo Costa. Okay. Uh, so. Do a do a library search. See if that turns you can up do. Any you can do a library research. Uh, so. Got a nine. Uh, well, did did, the, did Dave, David did a face down with Lorenzo Costa? Did did David tell you any details, or no? Uh, I you think he you. did later on. He didn't at the time. Uh, but right. it was when I brought up Lorenzo that he yeah. then confirmed, yeah, this guy, this guy was hanging around. But, but well, I can tell you, uh, that is, is, are you there, David? David Skell? I'm there, yeah. Yeah, well, remember remember the face down? Did you tell Balthazar about the face down? Because you found out information uh, yes, about... Yes, I did. Okay, I well... Did, well... I did not, not, not in the beginning over the phone. But as soon as we met in my in my new yep. office, remind, I had all those people together in my in my office, where I introduced um, Sienna Skell, my uh, my assistant, and that's when I um, told them about that about that too because that was when Balthazar told me about right. his job. Here. Well, I, I was gonna say then then you you must have told them that this guy is like a sort of a local hero in the glen and he and he talks with some other media characters and and, and this guy he, he likes to go up against corporations he like he likes to make them feel accountable that that's what he's about yeah. anyway and that's so, why yeah. i want to make him shut up yeah so well that that's what so balthazar knows this but i presume he wants to know more about uh if if he if he chooses to uh, if he wants to do another role that then he, he can but that's kind of like the important stuff like that's kind of the main main line stuff. But uh, if you don't want to roll again, that's fine. Uh, we, we could transition back to the hospital. Uh, well, the, the only other thing. Sorry. Don't that's all right. That's all right. Interrupting you. Uh, just um, something that was left over from the the night before where we ended the last session. Uh, Balthazar had gone out and he'd sort of invited the entire office out yes, um, to try did. and do a bit of networking and look out for any other rumours and things that he might have heard. Uh, see if he could get a line on any other information. Uh, so we were going to do uh, some sort of role based on that, but we didn't so you want to do, do the the so, so you wanted to do a... I forget the role. It's like a rumor. It's like a roll uh, of thing. Uh, well, it, essentially, he wanted to he wanted to use um, like maybe conversation or persuasion or something to start with. He, he could use uh, conversation. So I accept conversation uh, from that previous session. Uh, and he was going to essentially. He got like two hundred eddies extra last time around. And he was going to spend maybe a half of that on buying drinks for people in the hopes that yeah, I remember uh, that. You know, as as he's working his way around, that maybe that will give him some sort of edge in uh, loosening tongues and getting people. I, to well, I, I, I did up. I did say that this would increase your reputation a little bit as well. 
uh, at least as far as Rockland and how, how you're known as. So th- this this did well because you're a contractor and you're trying to fit in and and it's su- and you you succeeded in that. Uh, but you you can do a conversational if you wish. I might not have specifics for you because uh, you that, did. That's yeah, that's absolutely fine. I mean, we yeah. we sort of covered what he was doing at the end of last session. We just then didn't yeah uh, make the rules. I realized after we ended the stream. Uh, but so. the, the conversations could g- give you an asset, let's say. Uh, 13? Yeah, you, you remember chatting to uh, a couple of, uh, a group of a group of guys, a couple of execs. You know, you, you're just talking about drugs and, and all that, and you're, you're kind of fitting in with them. Uh, the, there's, a bit, there's a bit of a synth called culture in uh, New Westbrook, is what you realize. There's a bit of a culture there. Maybe there's like a dealer. They didn't, they didn't go to specifics, though. Okay, and then when he gets home after that, he would then follow that up with um, it will probably be a library search again, just to you know, sort of take the rumors that he's heard and see if he can track down through social media or whatever it might be. So, so you want to you of... don't want to know who the synth coke dealer is? Is that is that what you're interested in, or you want to know about uh, Lorenzo, or just in general? What 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 type of it, Either or, any anything that he can get a line on and and sort of understand what's going on there better, um, he wants to be as well informed as he can. And if it happens to be evidence that suits the story that he wants, then all the better. Sure, uh, I, I can accept the uh, general rule. Uh, if you wanted to do a uh, library search, okay. Twenty-one, very good. So, yeah, you, you get a lot of uh, information on just uh, well, not only the people you're working with, but just sort of the, the connections that they have. So that this might be something worth a note. Maybe the next time if, if there's someone in the office that you want to know more about or you, you kind of know who their family member is, let's say, like you, you, you feel very well uh, informed of uh, who, who who you're working with, essentially. Okay. Or your, col- your colleagues, because you, you do work with uh, David. That's your team leader. Uh, a- any more stuff? Because I know the no. last session was a while ago, and I know you wanted to, to do yeah. more stuff. Yeah? No, uh, that's it. All right, cool. Uh, so, yeah, ap- apologies, uh, Ramirez. Uh, well, Ramirez... You, you've you've just came into Antonio's office, and we we transition back to the hospital again. He hangs up his bloodied gear and takes his helmet off, and his, his shaggy black hair. The the sort of uh, you know, as he takes the helmet off, it's all like roughed up, and he's kind of like you know, sweating. It looks like he came from a, a very uh, tough mission. And Antonio says to you, "I'm gonna be honest, I'm." Not sure if I'm feeling this new corporate partnership with Rockland. Sure, anyone who pays us, right? But why why would they need people like you as part of their unit? It's a fucking cybernetic company. I didn't take the time to read the contract fully, but it's your funeral, Cabron. Here's the deets. And he hands you over a data shard with the contract details. And you can, and if, if you're familiar with the, the shards, you can place it uh, well, if you, if you choose to do so, Ramirez, well, what do you do with this shard? Uh, well, uh, last I checked, he hasn't got any interface plugs or anything like that, so I'm assuming he can slot oh, he it doesn't. into some kind of... Uh... It, you, well, you could, you could slot, slot it into a computer or a device yeah, or yeah, even your agent. I, I accept your agent, you can you could, uh, do so. Yeah, uh, so, yeah. so, so he... Uh, well, well, we'll transition over to David now. So, David is is thinking on uh, who he should be giving contracts to. Uh, did he give one to... Has he chosen... Uh, does he want to meet with these people, or does he want to... Um, has he decided who I, he wants to, to bring in? I actually want to meet the people, sure. Because that's the way you get to... 
Well, you get to find out um, who might be the, be the right one. Sure. But um, considering what uh, what the info is, I already had. There was a ripper dog. There was a a combat medic. And Junior level a, combat uh, medicine specialist. Yeah, and I think um, combat med sounds really really good. All right, you want to speak with this combat medic? I do. Or do you want... Okay, so, so no contracts now. You just want to speak to him first and be careful. That's fine. Uh, so, yeah. Trans transition back to you, of course. Uh, so, But you know that you must attend a... a uh, it, it is now mandatory therapy session to be acquainted with your new psychiatrist. The first session was free and paid for by Rockland due to the events that transpired with the, the death of a former colleague, you know, as Mike Marshall, from a previous branch. So you can decide, do you want to go speak to your guy first or do you want to go to your therapist? And this is, it's in the hospital. It, it'll be in the same, uh, nearby it's the same area as... Uh, Oh, you talk I'll to him first, question. okay? Uh, he he has a, a a basic contract right now, but uh, he can't accept it until like there's a you know both parties are present. So you but you have the contract on on you, uh, Ramirez. But yeah, David Scott, you enter the you just, you go across the sky bridge uh, to the hospital. You're inside the hospital right now. You. Go and try. You 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 try. You want to contact Ramirez. Mm -hmm. uh, there, there's a there's a help desk uh, right in front of you. Okay. Uh, there's a help desk in front of me, or uh, no? To uh, David, he he's just entered the building, uh, but he's looking for you, Ramirez. But he doesn't know where you are. But he, there's a help desk in front of him. I'm asking David what he wants um, to do. I actually, I'll actually take my assistant with me. Okay, uh, yeah, that's fine. Remembering all those names before I'm working with the people is always kind of tricky. Because, yep. who knows, if he's not the right guy, I don't have to memorize his name. Exactly. Well, and, um, your assistant can, can uh, go to the help desk and uh, ask where Ramirez is, if you wish. Uh, no, I'll actually go there. Okay. And I'll I'll tell them. Um, well, hello, my name is Skell. I want to talk to Miss uh, Mr. Ramirez. That was. I turn around. Um, Miss Quill. Um, yes, Mrs. Skell. What was what, what was his what was his first name? Uh, Braniff. Mr. Scale. Brenneth. So it's uh, Mr. Mr. Brenneth Ramirez. So you, so you say it to the help desk? Yep. All right, so they, they flip through their, uh, their, their agents, their holographics, and, uh, hmm. Yes, th this way, please, Mr. Scale. And they, they lead okay. you down, down the hallway uh, to Antonio's office. And you're right outside Antonio's uh, office uh, at the doorway, and you you can you can sort of look in, and uh, Ramirez is there, and he's he's sort of he's looking at the contract. Okay. And uh, okay. yeah, you knock on the door. Yeah. And uh, Ramirez hears it. Uh, that now Antonio's like just gestures to to the door. Uh, uh, and David, David can see this. Would David like to come in? I'll come in. All right. Uh, well, yeah, Ramirez and David are now, now face to face. What's the conversation? Well, um, he's got his superior in there too, right? Yeah, Antonio is in there. His superior. Okay. Then I'll first go to the superior. 
my, na my name is David Skell. We had a request for uh, for uh, for, uh, for, uh, for personal support, and I'd like to talk to Mr. Ramirez. Sure. Well, the contract's right there, so well. This is not really my thing, so I'll just leave you guys to it. You can use my office if you wish. And he and he just leaves, leaves you guys to it. Okay. Bran's kind of just reading the contract and glancing up occasionally at uh, at David to see when he's going to be addressed, but his uh, attention is mainly on the contract. I'll I'll wait till. His superior left the room. Yep, superior's just left the room, closed the door behind him. Closed the door. Then I turned to him. Mr. Ramirez? Yes. I'm David Stell. I offer you my hand. Shakes it. I'm here to check out whether you might be the right person for, uh, for this job. I see. Uh, what company. does the job entail? Oh, we do... We do PR basically, but we do like, um, let's say it like this. I'm known to be the guy in the company who does what has to be done. So we try to keep our, our company, the name of our company clean and so on. I will remind you, by the way, uh, you do have that uh, mission that uh, Teddy was talking about, uh, that I, I sent you, the uh, the radiation of the... I won't go into too, too much detail, but... Where is uh, the, Where is the, the Let me just get that up, just, just to give more clarification. Uh, Give me a sec. Oh, I didn't send you the actual thing, but I told you the title, and I'll get it up for you. I can, I can read it out if you want. I've read it out before, but yeah, he, obviously a new player. He's not going to know uh, what this is going to be yet. I mean, you could, you could show him this, actually, if, if you want out, to. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll read it out. So I'll uh, send this over to you. So this is what I'll, I'll not, I'll not tell him everything yet. I'll right. not tell him everything about that mission yet, until I know that he's in my team. But um, as soon as he is, he'll know it anyway. So yeah, I, I, I sent. So th this is what Teddy. This is like sort of. He discussed this with uh, Balthazar before. And uh, a little bit of time has passed since then, uh, a couple of days. And uh, basically, this is his old firm, and, and he's got a... This is sort of under wraps. This is kind of confidential, and this and this contract's going out for medtech employees, and this is sort of... Uh, yeah, this is sort of like... Uh, not strictly legal, I guess, or, you know, it, it's sort of a operation... Uh, from Teddy himself, this is sort of his thing in a way, and he and he would like to employ a med tech for for your team or recommends a, a med tech for your team. So that's kind of what's yeah. happening there. You get to choose if you want to disclose this to him. I'm sure the med tech might be a little confused. Maybe he's not. Maybe he just wants money. That's up to him. Well, the next question out of his mouth would be, how do you see a med tech like me fitting into this role? Well, as we are, as we are not only staying in our offices to do our work, because public relations is something you don't do only from your desk. And as you know, Night City, and we can't um, be sure to always be staying in corporate zones. It's always good to have a medtech around with us. I see. So you basically want the job that I'm doing now, you want to subcontract me to your team? Basically that, yeah. I get it. Um, what kind of risks are we looking at? Always depends on the jobs. If we do have to do something in the combat zone, risk is slightly higher. If we don't, then... 
there's no risk. So, um, thing, uh, thing is, um, I'm one of the people who does what has to be done. So, I'm not the person who, if he sees something is not going according to plan, or something is a bit more risky than I anticipated, I'll not be the one who will quit the job because of that. Okay. Uh, anything you need to know from me? Well, <clears throat> um, it says you uh, you are you are a combat a, a combat medic. That's right. Yeah, I earn my ticket with uh, with trauma team. Uh, okay. They uh, they gave me the training, so uh, yeah, I've been trained as a combat medic. But uh, I'm really interested in. Uh, in cyberware, actually, uh, it's kind of a hobby of mine. So the opportunity to work with Rocklin could be pretty interesting. Yeah, this is, you know, this this is actually a very good thing. As a combat medic, you you must be used to working under stress. Um, yeah, I mean, having having an expert for cyberware is always is always a good thing. Yeah, we, we... Oh, you got some some to say? No, no. Just just tell me when you want to end that. I don't. You guys conversating? I, I like it. Okay, the the rest will be just a few basic questions. You always you always hear everywhere. So. Sure. I mean, you can do it. Uh, well, he's got the contract. Uh, yeah. He he can. Uh, you both need to sign it. Uh, the company is already sort of signed off, but it's just you as as the team leader needs to make sure that he signs it and then you sign it, and, still, and then you're I'll good still, to go. I'll still let him think about it, and t and tell him that if he says he wants that job. He can he can hit me up in my in my office, and we'll do the rest there. All the official things. He'd uh, he nod and say, "I'd be yeah, I'd be grateful for some time to think about it." Um, and he would then probably take a take a break of a couple a couple of hours and then get back to him and say, "Yeah, I'm I'm down for working with you guys." Then I'll tell him where my where my office is, and um, and we can sign uh, sign the papers and pass it on to human resources. All right, we can uh, we can uh, transition to the offices right now in Rockland. So we we're in the marketing division offices. Uh, so Bob walks into his office and Bal Balthazar is on his, it's, it's morning time. Uh, you're on your morning break. Uh, and you've just done a bit of PR hustle and you, we, we, does Balthazar walk in with Bob and just sort of ha have a break, uh, with Bob yeah, in his office? Yeah, he'll uh, he'll probably want to make it look natural as well because he needs to arrange to hand over the excellent piece of fiction that he's written up for Bob. Yep. Well, I I'm gonna say, putting words in his mouth, he's he's going to take it, uh, and he's gonna get in on that at some point. That's that's on it. That'll be on his maybe maybe uh, not quite top of his agenda. He's got work to do, and maybe he'll get around to it. Uh, but you, you see a sweating Jared, your uh, co-worker, uh, lighting a cigarette outside Bob's office and knocks on the door. And I'll, I'll say Bob's but, sitting in his computer uh, and you, you're standing. No, no, Balthazar's definitely sitting on the other side of his desk with the with his feet up on the desk. Oh, okay. So, so yeah, Jared because is... Just... that kind of douche. 
Jared is just continuously knocking, and uh, Bob, Bob, sa hey. Bob says to you, uh, she, she, maybe we should get the door. Yeah, come in, dude. All right, J Jared comes in, uh, not looking quite himself, and he, he's just lighting his cigarette, you know. Hey, uh, big guy and uh, Netrunner friend. <laughs> And the pair noticed that Jared, yeah, something's wrong with this guy. Is this something you you give a shit about? Oh yeah, not necessarily because he cares about Jared, but because he's nosy and wants to know everything, and anything that's happening to Jared could potentially impact him. He's a self okay. bastard. Is there anything you say to him in particular? Hey, you look, um, good, man, you look good. Um, something bothering you? Ah, oh, Jesus Christ, is it that obvious? Yeah, let's just say that a fucking Italian media guy came around my place, now I'm shitting my pants. I didn't write his out or nothing, but, you know, let's be, he's real serious, all right? He's real serious about this. He ain't dropping this shit anytime soon. I mean, okay, we saw what okay. David did. Sit, sit down. All right, man. Just, you know, make sure that the the door is closed and the, you know, I presume the office has some sort of privacy settings to make sure that no sure. one Sure, you, you can set sort, you can set blinds on and uh, uh, sort of soundproof settings. Yeah. Okay, go on. I, Start from the beginning, okay. man. Okay. This Italian motherfucker, Lorenzo, you know Lorenzo, he came over to my place. All right? Now, I didn't say nothing. I swear to God. But we saw what David did, right? He's looking for the fucking body. What What happened with the body? He's always telling me, what, what the fuck happened to that body? And I, I don't know. Like, he thinks he's dead or something. How does he know he's fucking dead? Like, only we know he's dead, right? So what's happening? Right. What? It, it's worth saying that, um, just sort of out of character, Balthazar will definitely, since Lorenzo turned up, Balthazar will definitely have done some sort of library search because we were expecting that body to have been found, like, immediately. Yeah. There was there was a message sent saying where it was. So has anything turned up on any sort no. of news about... No, there was no body. You, you looked and there was, there was nothing. There was no article... Or nothing, which he, is strange if, for you. If if that happened, then he would have gone back and sort of visited the area and seen was the was the car still there? Was the well? Still it, there? It, if he if he did go there, then he would have seen nothing. Is the no, answer? No police, see no, no, no car, no body. No, no body, which is pretty strange. I mean, not necessarily, because we left an unlocked car on the street. And well, it, it is, but, but in terms of the, if you were expecting anything, mm. uh, and well, if there yeah. was going to be a body there, it would have been found, is what I'm saying. But like yeah. in this case, nothing in that area was found, or, or there was no sort of police lineup or anything or whatever. And this would be strange to you, knowing that well, yeah. that surely there would be, but like there wasn't. Is the, is the okay. answer? Okay, but, cool. Just yeah. just so I know what I know. Like, yeah. Okay, go on, man. What like, what was he asking? Well, what, you know, what did he say? He, he was talking about the body lotto. Like, if he was dead, he would have shown up. But you know, but you know, what 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 even happened with the body? Like, I I don't even know. Like, the the police would have found it. Right? But nothing happened. You know, just another fucking guy, another loser, dies in Night City. Who gives a fuck? But he didn't show up. I, you know, we, you check the records. Like, I don't know what's going on here. But uh, what are we going to do if he finds something out? You know, if you, about me and you, like in the group. Did you hear anything lately? Look, man, just don't, don't even sweat it. Well, I'm literally if, sweating, but... You know, if, if shit goes sideways... We have proof that that guy committed suicide. Pure and simple. 
You have proof. We all, get, we get all the know fuck out of here. You got proof. Where'd you find proof from, man? You, you were there. But you said you got you evidence. It, man. You said you have evidence. Yeah. Right? Like, you know, evidence to prove that we're innocent? Innocent of what? Self-defense, dude. So, but if he comes asking questions and stuff, what are we going to say? You don't got to tell him anything, man. All right, well, who, you know, I'm very good at that. You know, I'm not ratting you guys out, you know? Yeah, who the fuck is he? What's he doing? Yeah, he's just some you? Italian media guy. I don't give a fuck about him. I'm not nervous at all. I'm good. Exactly. You know, you've got a bit of your uh, not nervous just... Under your nose there. Might want to oh, clean yeah, that up. Uh, yeah. Uh, got a little ham on it. I got, you know, I, I done a little more than usual, you know. Uh, not not like because of him. <laughs> no, nah, nah, it just, just, you know, I, it makes my fingers dial faster, you know. So so, so you, you say he came he came to your place. Yep, came to my con. What, what did he say? Was he just fishing? Did he say had any evidence of what does what does he think well, happened he, he was he was just routine he says just coming over you know he just saw julia next door and he was just asking you know hey s same shit that david you know the same shit that you know he was telling david or some shit i don't know i mean i was pretty high at the time to be honest with you but uh i didn't read you out i swear to god i did not read you out no no i'm you, you never would, dude. You never would. Uh, but I, I want to ask you a question. What what kind of weapons you guys rocking? Because you know, I I got a custom heavy pistol, you know, and I'm hiding under my pillow at night just in case it comes again. And uh, you know, I've had my time, you know, in the rough urban. But you know, this, you know, this is fucking bullshit. Right? We're living in one of the safest zones in Night City, and now we got this fucking media guy. Who this guy could be a monster. I mean, he's a fucking Italian guy. Don't worry about him. We have proof. We have the witnesses. That street wasn't empty. They saw the dude get himself killed. Nothing to worry about. All right, um, while, while you, you sort of uh, conversate with him, but we'll transition back to David. Uh, he's at the hospital. Uh, so, David, uh, so, did David leave the office? Yes. Wait, wait, okay, well, you, Because you, I told him, um, he, he should take his time, think about it, and uh, tell me when he, when he knows whether he wants to take you to have that job or not. He should tell me, let's say, until latest tomorrow noon. Okay. Yeah, uh, I was just gonna say that uh, that you have your therapy session uh, that you remembered. So, uh, do you want to go? I don't have time for you know, for therapy. I've got things. Well, to it, do. It, it, it is mandatory. Then I'll have to go there. All right. I'll have to go there and just it just get through with it with that stuff as sure. as quick as possible. So go you. Back to the office. Well, uh, not not so fast. You uh, you head there. You uh, uh, you're in a hurry, but you, you read the you're, you're sort of waiting there, and uh, it 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 says it's closed right now. Uh, but it's you see a wall of text uh, like right next to the uh the is the Tom Bell, the name of your psychiatrist, is like a wall of text right right beside. Just just sort of. About de depersonalization disorder, I'll, I'll read the full thing just to uh, give you some give you some background on uh, depersonalization. Depersonalization disorder is character characterized by feeling detached from one's life, uh, life thoughts and feelings. People with this type of disorder say they feel distant and emotionally unconnected to themselves, as if they are watching a character in a boring movie. Other typical symptoms include problems with concentration and memory. The person may report feeling spacey or out of control. Time may slow down. They may perceive their body to be a different shape or size than usual. In severe cases, they cannot 
recognize themselves in a mirror. And you, you, the psychiatrist, you reckon, is he, ushering you inside. Okay, then I'll go inside. All right, you, you uh, uh, look up and down. It's a, it's a bald man with a goatee. He's wearing like a white coat. He introdu introduces himself to David as Tom Bell, or doc Dr. Tom Bell. And he says to you, I know why you're here. Rocklin wishes your mental health to be sufficient. But let's not dilly-dally. Why are you really here, David? Because I have to. Well, I see you mandatory. If it hadn't been mandatory, I wouldn't have come. Of course. Well, I see you're fitted with state-of-the-art cyberware. Are you dealing with any difficulties with the passing of your call, Marshal? Not up until now. Well, let me ask you this. Are you experiencing any of the following traits? Grand sense of self, need for stimulation, cunning and manipulative, lack of remorse or guilt, callousness and lack of empathy, poor behavior controls, impulsivity, failure to accept responsibility, criminal versatility, any of those at all, uh, David Skell? I can be I can be impulsive with it at times, but ah. otherwise no. And I was well, that before before I had any cyberware, also too. So interesting. That, it didn't really change. Well, I can offer you standard humanity loss therapy. The first week is free. Would you like to engage in this therapy? Well, well I'll take that uh, that first one anyway because I have to take it. Sure. And and if I if I personally have the feeling that it, uh, that it helps me in any way, then I might I might think about taking more. Okay. Well, for the first week. Uh, there is a role, and we. I don't think we'll do it now because you want to test the waters. We'll and if you after the um, after the after the therapy. session, yeah. The, well, you get a two d six, at and that that doesn't take with that 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 regains humanity. Okay. Uh, so you you could do that now, but I'll presume if you do it now, this is like a we'll weeks long. You want to do it later, okay? Because because you're testing the waters right now. You want to see if this is worth doing. So, and if you do like it, then you can do the two d six. But you'll be with him for a week, and uh, okay. but next time you'll have to pay for it. This is your free uh, for a week session, or sessions for the week. Uh, so yeah, we'll we'll uh, we'll do. Everyone everyone can roll for apart from the med tech. Do a hustle. The hustle rule, and if you see in the top right, I've got it, got it up for you, and this is for a week. Remember, one d six. Yeah, one one d six. Everyone roll one d six. I think actually it's only two of you, apart from the med tech, and you should be able to see the hustles on the top right. And if you can't see it, that's fine. I'll tell you what you got. So, is that a one, Balthazar? Is that what you just rolled, or is that a previous? It is. That's okay. A one. one and a two, so. The media, oh, the media gets 300 eddies, I think. You wrote an expose, ex expose that covered a major topic, made a big sale. I wonder if this would relate to the stuff you were doing before. It could do if you wish, but I don't think you were going to publish that yet. But let's say you did get paid for that. That would make a lot of sense to me. Uh, by the marketing director. Yeah, not uh, not ready for this big story yet. But I yeah, not ready for know, the big it, one. It, it could be some some minor thing he's doing on the side about one of Rockland's competitors. Of course, and how they've you know they've they've had failure rates on one of their cybernetic products, and uh, actually they sort of fudged the figures, and they they knew this problem existed beforehand, but they pushed it out before it was ready. 
Yeah, that sounds very uh, uh, that sounds very good to me. I like that. Um, let's see what they exec. The exec, so you got two. Uh, oh, <laughs> didn't do well again. So no bonus. No bonus. You oh, trying to read it? Nothing much happened. Corporate was unimpressed. Lost the bonus. Well, Oof. Actually, you're still putting together the team, so I don't really have time. Yeah, to you, yeah. We'll say you, you're you've been very busy putting together your team. You you uh, you still need to get the. You've been busy with the the sort of contracting. You know, looking for a med tech and yeah. That, that that makes sense to me. So, go ahead and add those if you haven't already. Uh, so the next part was for Bob, but unfortunately Bob isn't with us today. And that, but I will say that. Well, actually, before we do Bob sing, uh, would, would people like to do more RP? Would you like to go to a restaurant or anything? Uh, with your new med tech. Um, as I as I lost my um, my bonus today, I'd not I'd not invite everybody again like like this time. But I'd go to a restaurant with them if they wanted. Of course. Uh, does does the med tech uh, and the media accept? And and Bob and maybe Jared will will come with you. Yeah, if he's uh, if he's being invited out by his new team, then yeah. And since Balthazar's doing okay on the cash front recently, then he will offer to. It's his turn to pay. All right, that's very nice of him. It's it's absolutely cool. All right, so you guys can uh, let's say let me get the table up. Uh, give me a second here. So there was like a, a list last time. I don't know if you guys remember the the list. I, I forgot. It was, was it? Yeah, it's, it's tw what? twenty Emmys per person. Yeah, it was twenty. Twenty. Person. Is this for a good restaurant or is this like a? Yeah, that was for a good restaurant. For a good rest. Yeah, uh, you're in New Westbrook. There, there's going to be restaurants there. It's, uh, it's not an but, excellent restaurant, but a good restaurant. Well, there's some really nice Japanese uh, restaurants in New Westbrook. Oh. Yeah. If you're interested, yes, yeah, so you could pay twenty. Uh, is is uh, not paying by each? Is is uh, is again paid by some of it being paid by uh, Balthazar, or is everyone paying separately? I'll 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 cover it. So you cover every everyone's cost. Uh, Jared will be there, and Bob will be there as well. Yeah, so that's what five was total. So it's will be a hundred hundred eddies. Yeah. We can do that. All right. So you guys can converse, and and once you finish, we're gonna get to what happens after, and then that's when we'll end it. But if there's anything you guys want to bring up, or just this is this is the team all together. Obviously, don't have add a character. We don't have Bob, but uh, well, he's there in the game. Well, Bran is well, not really evidently used to Japanese food but he's willing to try things so he's uh yeah it's, uh, I'll nervous I'll actually, um, I'll actually introduce him to the, to the rest of the team because uh, that's it's just the right occasion for doing sure. this right now uh yeah J Jared Jared uh, just yeah you're the med tech right uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, combat medic with uh, with trauma team up until recently. So uh, looking for a, a, a bit of a change. I mean, I know it's going to be much the same same vein, but uh, yeah, it's good to be working with Rocklin. I'm, I'm, cybernetics is a is a hobby of mine. You know, I'm, I I do things like you know to relax, like trying to work out the minimization of the impedance between the uh, the microcircuitry and the synaptic uh, synaptic cleft. So, you know, just relaxing stuff. So, wait, you know oh, that that that's that all sounds that all sounds well and good and everything. But let's say I'm passed out. You know, let's say I'm unconscious. Maybe I'm gonna die from a heart attack uh, because I, you know, I have a drug problem. Everyone knows this, but you know, could you save my life? Yeah, of, 
Of course, yeah. Um, I'm going to guess it's some kind of uh, stimulant synth coke, something like that. Well, yeah, it's a synth coke. Everyone knows this in Westbrook. You know, we got a synth coke culture. You know, I just got I got the deets from the new dealer. But, oh, sure, uh, yeah. I mean, standard standard med kit has got a, a synth coke agonist in there. That should be able to... Uh, yeah, and then that combined with a, 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 a different type of stimulant, which should wake your eye up. Yeah. All right, well, wait, look, he looks over to David. Yeah, I like this guy. I like this guy. Is that going to be something I'll be doing regularly? Because if that's the case, I can make sure that there's always well, the yeah. antidote in the, in the kit. Look, I'm just saying in theory, all right? In I, theory, I can yeah, control. Obviously. I can control my uh it's not a problem i just say it's a problem sure. but you know it, it ain't a problem all right okay it's yeah, just sure. part of the culture you know what i'm saying but it's just in yeah. theory no, you know it. we we sure. go over the top you know it's a big yeah. party no, going yeah on. oh yeah i get it yeah it's fun but talking about re relaxation techniques and as you are specialist in cyberware are you able to do um <clears throat> to do that kind of therapy because of um, using excessive cyberware, because at the uh, moment, uh, uh, what they're calling cyber psychosis therapy, uh, not really licensed to do that. I mean, I'm familiar with the physiological and the psychological parameters of it, but as as a licensed therapist, no, that's not me. I can install okay. stuff, but I can't treat the the psychological side of it. If the, if the license, let that, let that be my problem. We'll, we'll see whether we can organize that because this can save us a lot of time because company wants me to undergo ther uh, therapy on a regular basis. And um, if we can shorten that, uh, that, uh, that procedure, it gives us more time to actually be productive. Sure. Well, I mean, for professional reasons, I should advise you to stick with a licensed cyber psychosis therapist. But, you know, also as a as a professional, if you if you want to talk to me in, in confidence, then we'll, then then we could do that. Sure. Okay. Nice. All right. If that, if that ends it there, we can move on to Bob and his thing. Unless anyone wants to add anything before uh, we just just a couple of things they they don't necessarily need role playing out if you don't want but uh at some point uh since Jared dropped a little bit of information there then uh when they're alone at some point during the evening then uh, naturally Balthazar <laughs> will uh, want those details for the new dealer at the company okay yeah he, Jared Jared can uh He's a well-known dealer, uh, so he's just gonna uh, unreluctantly you just give you, you know, casually just hand you over the information. Uh, yeah. yeah. So that th there you go. You, he, he's he's in the area. He's in the New Westbrook area. He's uh, he's he's sort of a uh, white collar. Like he, he's not sort of. He, he's like a professional drug dealer. Like he's not like. Uh, you know, hanging around the street corner. This guy is a, he's a professional, let's see. Okay, cool. Uh, so we'll take those details. Uh, and it's also worth noting that before they came out, like back earlier in the day, uh, <clears throat> after Jared had turned up um, at Bob's office, then um, Balthazar will have had a further conversation with Bob about maybe it's... It's becoming a little more pressing that we deal with this Lorenzo guy. So while he's doing one little bit of computer editing, then maybe there's something he could do with this video file. Um, and there's a video from his point of view of what happened to Mike. Oh, uh, um, Bob, Bob had a video? You mean his, no, his video? Bal or your Bal video, sorry. Balthazar you, you... has a video, right, which right, he gotcha. wasn't going to use, but Le this Lorenzo guy is causing a lot of trouble, and he doesn't want to wait to get more genuine evidence. So if Bob happens to be able to maybe 
dirty the video up a little bit so it looks like it's coming from a less you know less high quality um sort of cyber eye set uh, okay and and therefore maybe obscure the face of the person who actually um puts mike down because you know it's justifiable sure. self-defense but at the same time why cause trouble when we don't need it all we need to be able to do is prove oh look this lorenzo guy had a video proving that Mike was dead all along, and he's going around making trouble for Rocklin. Sure. Yeah, I, I'm. I'm really in this uh, for Bob. Uh, and next, I, I'll rem actually I'll probably before a session uh, at a character I will show him this so that he knows what he's doing uh, yeah. in character. So yeah, there. You, yeah, there you go. I'll, I'll, I've just uh, relayed that. Is there anything else? And. And uh, he would have he would have passed that plan over to David as well, just because he doesn't want to overstep the mark and just make sure he's clued in, doesn't have any objections to that course of action. Sure. You know. Okay. Is that everything sure. y'all wanted yep, to do? That was it. All right. Well, we'll end it with this. So Bob from IT, Bob has a call coming from his agent labeled Rockland Security. And I'm going to say he, he's, he uh, accepts the call because, uh, well, for obvious reasons, but because he had said at the end of that last session that he had relayed all that information about the, this mysterious guy that was in his office, if you remember, uh, he had called security and said, mm, who is this guy? And he wanted to know, like, it's, was this an employee? because uh, the guy had just left but the the voice uh the other end says how you doing bob did some research on that suspicious guy you saw frankly speaking sir i've never seen this fucking guy before we only have facial recognition software for the company but i can confirm he doesn't work with us makes me very suspicious on how he slipped past security in the first place it must have been some sort of insider you said you first found him in your office. I don't see him on a previous timeline. I think he might be some sort of merc or something. And then Bob, Bob, Re Bob rests in his chair and contemplates in his office. And then suddenly a message uh, types out in real time on his terminal. The message reads, hello, Bob, follow the white bozo. And then we'll leave it there. But there you go. So thanks for watching. This has been Cyberpunk Uncensored. I'll uh, wait for Rob to to get over here. But I hope you enjoyed it. I know it was a short one because uh, there's a lot more uh, with Bob that, and the crew. But he wasn't there, and I didn't want him to miss this next part. So we'll end it there as a cliffhanger. Uh, but yeah. Wait, wait for R R Rob to oh, come here. over. If he... Oh, you're here? Oh, I'm watching from the shadows. <laughs> How does he I'm do that? I'm creeping around watching from the shadows. <laughs> <laughs> no, it went great. I, I think I, I agree with you. I think uh, hold off till uh, Hugo, you know, Bob, yeah. till Bob Smith can get back in it. He messaged me. He had a bunch of family stuff come up for the holidays and he just couldn't break away so he uh, yeah, yeah that, it. that's okay that's fine yeah, yeah. no sweat these, but i thought it went great happen. yeah exactly yeah. no but uh just want to reiterate for the uh, game man. anybody tuning in and watching make sure you join us this wednesday i'm doing my weekly live stream and we have a bunch of giveaways it's the day before christmas eve we have a special guest joining us from the wandering dm uh, and we'll be doing some giveaways we got a free subscription to sirenscape we got a free copy of cyberpunk red we have um a free case from elderwood academy and a free map from lion banner games so there's gonna be four different winners wednesday so you have a pretty good chance of getting something cool so everyone just come and join us uh 6 p.m pacific standard time on the cyberpunk uncensored twitch hell yeah but yeah you guys awesome. did great and uh i think uh one other thing i wanted to mention is uh, me and teddy Teddy B here. We're working on something special. Maybe uh, you know another ongoing series. 
Um, something else we'll be adding to the to the content here at Cyberpunk Uncensored. I don't want to give away too much, but I just want to let everybody know that we're constantly coming up with cool new shit to bring to the table and put out there. So we really appreciate everybody's support. Uh, it keeps us going. So thank you all so much, and stay tuned for next time. Take care. All right, awesome. See ya. <laughs>